to Mrs. D's Baking TV. Today on my channel, I am going to do a difficult bake. Now I know in the caption you've already seen the title and you're saying, Mrs. D, what's so difficult about baking cookies? Well, if you've watched any of my previous videos when I did the brioche and uh, another video, I can't remember which one it was, but I probably mentioned to you all that I had taken a master baking class with Joanne Chang. Well, one of the recipes that we learned during the master class was how to bake uh, chocolate chip cookies. Now, I know how to bake chocolate chip cookies. I've been baking chocolate chip cookies for over 30 years, but there is a skill. There's science behind baking the perfect chocolate chip cookie. So I am going to show you today what I've learned from the uh, master class that I've taken. Now these chocolate chunk cookies, um, the difference in these cookies and any other cookies that I have done is not only are we using regular unbleached uh, all-purpose flour, but we're also using bread flour. I know, shocker to me. According to the course, the bread flour contains protein, which will enable us to have a chewy, soft cookie. Also in this uh, recipe that's different, we are going to use chocolate chunks, not just regular, your semi-sweet chocolate chips. So all of the ingredients for this recipe, I will list in the description box. It's not my recipe, it's Joanne uh, Chang's recipe. Um, so this is not my recipe. I won't be changing anything because you know me and on Mrs. D's Baking TV, I like to switch up recipes. Another interesting thing about this recipe, it takes two days. It didn't have to take two days because actually, so the recipe says to allow the cookie dough to sit overnight. You can do that or she says that you can let it sit in the refrigerator for three hours. I may do the three hour thing. It just depends. Depends on my time today. Or I may do the 24. I think I'll probably do the 24 hours because I want to do it the long way first. And then maybe after doing it and mastering this particular recipe, I'll shortcut it. So follow along as I take you step by step. So this video may be a little longer than my normal videos. I'll speed up some of the process. Uh, but if you're interested in learning how to make these delicious chocolate chip cookies, follow along today on Mrs. D's Baking TV. To the stand mixer, we are going to add our softened butter. Now this butter, I actually let it sit out overnight and it's uh, soft enough that I can take my finger and press it into the butter and see my fingerprint, or it's soft enough where you could bend it, but it not fall apart. So that's what softened butter is. You don't wanna microwave it. You just let it sit out overnight and let it get soft. So we'll go ahead and add our softened butter to our stand mixer. And then we are going to add our brown sugar and our white sugar, our white granulated sugar. Now, whenever preparing a recipe, I always measure out all of my ingredients beforehand because I don't want to start a recipe and then run around the kitchen wondering, oh, I don't have enough brown sugar, I don't have. So I would suggest before you do any recipe, this one or any other one, that you gather all of your baking ingredients beforehand, measure them out so when you're ready to bake, you're just, you know, you can just add all your things to the bowl and get started. So as I was saying, I have already measured in this bowl my brown sugar and my white sugar. And when measuring, I use a scale. I find that using the scale is so much more easier for me. So let's go ahead and add our white sugar and our brown sugar to the bowl. And like I said, guys, this particular recipe is literally like a science experiment because during the masterclass uh, demonstration, Joanne tells us to cream the butter and sugar for, uh, five to eight minutes. I'm not used to timing um, my uh, time when I'm creaming my butter and sugar when doing cookies. I'm used to doing it when I'm baking a cake, but not being very specific when uh, baking cookies. And I'm doing this for the first time in front of you guys. I think that's the reason why I waited so long to try this recipe is because it's so particular. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and cream our butter and sugar in our stand mixer and we're gonna cream it 
uh, for three minutes. Then we're going to scrape down our bowl and then we're going to cream it for another two minutes until we've um, added up at least uh, come to at least five to eight minutes. Now you'll know that your butter and your sugar is creamed enough when it goes from yellow to almost a white color, hence cream. The color cream is white. I learned this in class. This is not something I came up with. So yeah, you'll know that it's ready when it's light and fluffy and it's not so yellow. It takes more on a, uh, a uh, cream color. So let's get started. Stop my mixture and scrape down my bowl because I want to make sure that all of my butter and sugar are well incorporated. Now I'm using dark brown sugar. This recipe calls for light brown sugar and the only difference between light brown sugar and dark brown sugar is the amount of molasses that's added into the, uh, the brown sugar. So my, my mix may not be uh, as, uh, it may be a little more darker than if I were using light brown sugar. So I've scraped down my bowl and let's continue to cream our butter and sugar for at least um, probably two more minutes. We'll scrape down our bowl and we're gonna continue this process. So be patient, don't rush it. been about three minutes so I am going to scrape down my bowl again because we want our mixture to be light and fluffy remember and this is not what I would call it's light but it's not as fluffy as it should be so let's continue to cream this a little more Probably about, let's do three more minutes. It's been about six. Yep, there's my timer going off. Alexa, clear the timer. Good old Alexa. <laughs> and this is the light and fluffy consistency that we're looking for. See that? Yeah, that's good. So now we will add our eggs and our vanilla extract to our mixture. Scrape down that bowl a little more because I find, I've said this before, when I use my large uh, capacity, this is a six quart 
uh, KitchenAid mixer. And I find that when I'm doing small recipes, I have to scrape down my bowl a lot because I find that a lot of my flour and sugar, whatever I'm mixing, uh, tends to stay at the bottom of the bowl. So I find that when I use the large six quart KitchenAid mixer, I have to do a lot of scraping down. But that's okay. That's okay. I think I've told you guys before. I gave my smaller one to my son, not knowing that I was going to start a YouTube channel. But uh, yeah, when he went out on his own, that was one of the gifts that I gave him. I gave him my uh, my original KitchenAid mixer and he uses it. Yes, he does. He and his family. Yes. Now, so to this bowl, I am going to crack my eggs and I'm going to add my vanilla extract to my eggs in order to uh, mix it together because that's what Joanne said to do and that's how I'm going to do it normally. When I'm baking cookies, I'll just crack my egg right into my mix. But I am going to do it just like the instructor instructed us. So, yeah, let's go ahead and crack the eggs. And our recipe calls for one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I am going to mix that together before I add it to my mixing bowl. Okay, and so that looks good. And I'm just gonna drizzle it in just a little at a time. On a low speed. You literally have to have patience with this recipe. Because I'm so used to just dumping everything in at one time and hoping for the best. Well, I don't think it was hoping for the best. I've done my other chocolate chip cookie recipes for so many years and I'm just used to just not really thinking about the science of the recipe. I'm going to stop my mixture and scrape down my bowl. So like I just said, I want to make sure that everything is incorporated really well. Okay, and then let's mix that together just a little more on low. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now, another thing about this recipe that I've never done before, we are going to add our chocolate to the flour mixture. And we are not going to mix, our, once we mix our flour and chocolate, we are then going to mix our mix by hand so that we don't over agitate or create too much gluten in our cookie dough. And I said we weren't going to use our mixer. I am going to use the mixer. I'm going to use the mixer just to mix it in just a little, but I will finish it by hand. So let's add our chocolate to our mixture. Add our chocolate to our flour. We haven't added it to our mixture yet. And the only gadget that I forgot to tell you that you're going to need, you're going to need an airtight container. Because remember, 
I said, this is a two day process. We're going to allow our cookie dough to rest in the refrigerator uh, for 24 hours. You can do it as least as three hours, but I'm following this recipe to the letter today and I am going to allow my cookie dough to rest for 24 hours because I want it to come out perfect the first time. All right, so now let's add our flour and chocolate mixture to our batter bowl, to our mixing bowl, <laughs> batter bowl. That's a uh, pampered chef term. I can't get it out of my mind. It's been years since I sold pa pampered chef, but I can't get that, that term out of my mind. So let's go ahead and add that to the bowl. And I am going to pulse it probably about just three or four times and then we'll mix it by hand. I think that's good. I said pulse it because I'm thinking about my previous recipe when I used my food processor. So I mixed it just a little and then I will finish this by hand and then we're going to place this in an airtight container and we will put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. We'll come back tomorrow and see what we're working with. So this is the air this is the airtight container that I'm using today. It's by Pyrex. Um, you can use this in the from the freezer to the oven to the table from what I understand. But yeah, after mixing my dough by hand, I'm going to place it in this airtight container. Put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. I probably could have mixed this in the mixer maybe a couple of more turns, but I think it's going to be okay. Okay, and this is what our mixture is looking like. Can you see that? And now I'll place it in my airtight container. I will see you tomorrow, cookie dough. Ta-da! Okay, so we've let our cookie dough rest for exactly 24 hours, and this is what it's looking like. So I took this out of the refrigerator um, probably about 30 minutes ago to um, let it come to room temperature. Some of it is still pretty cold, but I suggest if you try this recipe, you definitely allow your cookie dough to come to room temperature so it's easier to scoop out. So I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees and I've added my, well actually I always keep my oven thermometer in my oven because it's very important according to on the instructor who created this recipe that your oven temperature is at 350 degrees and actually let me show you this is one of my oven thermometers that i leave actually in my little smaller oven but it's just a little oven thermometer uh it's got a little wear and tear on it but this is what i use i leave it in my thermom leave it in my oven and when it reaches the exact 350 degrees uh fahrenheit then we will place our cookies in the oven but i already know i've already checked my oven is already at 350 so we're going to scoop these cookies out on to the uh line cookie sheet and we are going to get baking and we are going to bake these for 13 to 18 minutes so let's go ahead and put about we're going to put about i would say about six cookies on um on the cookie sheet and we're going to spread them out because these cookies are going to they've got a big spread on them so if I followed all the directions, these should come out delicious. So let's go ahead and get these placed on our cookie sheets. And I am using a large ice cream scoop. Actually need a new one because this is one of my old ones and uh, it's not allowing me to be great right now because some of my cookie dough is getting stuck. So yeah, this one will be replaced after this video. Yes, it will. But we want a big heap of cookie dough because we want nice round cookies. 
And if you don't have a, uh, ice cream, a large ice cream scoop, you can use uh, two spoons or a wooden spoon. As a matter of fact, I am going, since this scoop is not allowing me to be great, I'm gonna get a spoon to assist. Yeah, there we go. You know what? We're gonna retire this cookie scoop. Yep, we're gonna chunk it because there's no sense in trying to use something that's not gonna work properly. So, one moment. I'm gonna get a smaller scoop. So, I'm gonna use my salt smaller uh, scoop, but I'm gonna do two scoops just to make one big. That's what we're gonna do. All right, there we go. So we've got our cookies placed on our sheet, and now we will place them in the oven. And guys, you know what's coming up next. I'm not gonna dance until we taste these cookies. So I set my timer on my oven to 13 minutes, but the recipe I think says between 13 and 18. So I'll check them at 13 because we're looking for the cookies to spread out and to be crispy around the edges. And you know, like I said before, depending on if you're cooking with gas or electric, you just have to get to know your oven. So I'll check these at 13 minutes and see, you know, if it's time to take them out. Okay, and we've allowed our cookies to bake the full 18 minutes and they are looking absolutely delicious. Let me let you see what they're looking like. And See that? Whoa, see that? And I'll, I am going to allow the cookies to cool on the pan for probably about 10 minutes according to the instructions. And then we will transfer our cookies to the cooling rack for an additional five to 10 minutes. I can't wait. I can wait because remember I said I was gonna follow the directions to the letter. So let's, let's let these cool for 10 minutes. Okay, I've let these cool in the pan for 10 minutes and now I'm going to transfer them to the cooling rack. This is a lot of cooling for a cookie. But I said I wanted to follow all of the instructions. So now we're gonna place them on the cooling rack and let them cool for an additional, probably about five minutes. These look absolutely delicious. They look just like the cookies in the video when, when Joanne Chang made them. Look at that. Nice and big and round and look at the bottom. Yes. Yes, okay. Let's follow the instructions. Five more minutes, let them set, and then we'll do our taste test. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. Taste this time. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. Which one of you, you wants Mrs. D to just devour you? I'm not going to eat this whole cookie. This, is, this looks like it's about a thousand calories. I'm not eating this whole cookie. But let me bring it up close so that you can see. Look at those delicious, huge cookies. And look at the bottom. Oh, and look at the chunks of chocolate. Oh my goodness, yes. This is what I call a successful bake. Oh, look at that. Oh, guys. Oh, oh my goodness. 
Wow. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Now, I baked a lot of chocolate chip cookies in my day. You can definitely taste the vanilla in this cookie and the chocolate. I got to get another piece. Mmm. 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 Okay. It's the dark chocolate for me. It's the dark chocolate. This is a delicious cookie. I'm not shocked that it's a delicious cookie because when going through this course, Joanna, Joanne clearly said that she did the science as far as the ratio and she wanted us to follow the recipe to the letter. And if we did, we would have delicious cookies. I see why this is one of the most popular cookies in her bakery. The name of her bakery is Flower Bakery. I think it's located in Boston. But thank you for joining me here on Mrs. D's Baking TV, where we bake these delicious chocolate chunk cookies. Thank you so much again for joining me in my kitchen. You've got to try this recipe. As a matter of fact, it's gonna become one of your new favorites. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, bake, and subscribe, and comment. I love reading your comments. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.